twice a week around 5.45 in the morning while it is still dark outside, I make my way to the tally center to take a power sculpt class. Now, I'm an early riser, as many of you know, but I will admit that while I'm awake early in these mornings, it's getting harder and harder to rise up and get moving, especially when it's so cold out. And you may ask me, are there other alternatives for exercise for a tired and weary early morning body? Well, of course there are. So why take this class? And I will tell you it's because of the group and it's because of accountability. When I'm exercising at home, I do not lift as heavy the weights nor do I do as many repetitions because I proclaim early on, I did a pretty good job. That's enough. I just won't eat enough anymore today. You know, this is enough. I don't need to do any more. I'm tired. You know, I'm going to listen to my body and just stop. But see, in that early morning class, there are others who come who are also tired and weary. And together in that space, there's encouragement to not stop. You can do more, you can lift heavier, but most of all, do not give up. Many of you know this from team sports and your training, that you receive energy and encouragement from the group. I love it when the marathon runners are coming through downtown Frederick and people are waving and clapping and they're ringing those cowbells and they're saying, keep on going, you've got this. You see people running together, encouraging one another to keep up this pace. Life can wear us down. Life can be exhausting and energy sapping. And there's no shortage of things that keeps us down or wears us down. And I don't need to remind any of us of the list, the long list of what is exhausting in these days. We see the weariness in one another's faces. We see the weariness in one another's footsteps. We see the shoulders hunched over with the burdens that we're carrying. Isaiah speaks to people who have been worn down. They are weary. They are weary of being in exile. They're weary that their situation won't change. Some of them are trying to keep their faith alive, and some have just given up. They were isolated. They felt alone. They were weary. And to them, Isaiah says, wait for the Lord. Wait for the Lord and not be weary. So how are we unweary in these times? I know that's not a word, but I kind of like it. How can we be unweary? See, to these weary, worn out, isolated people, the prophet speaks and reminds them to look at the heavens and the earth and be reminded that God created. Look up to the mountains. See that God did that. God is strong. God is mighty in power. God is everlasting from generation to generation. And God does not grow weary. It was the kind of news that the people of God needed to hear, especially when all the other news around them was so threatening, when everything felt so overwhelming, when they felt like they were filled with despair and fatigue and wondered if life was worth living. The prophet says it is. Remember. God is here and will give power to the faith, and God will give strength when we feel powerless. Wait for the Lord. It doesn't mean that we just stand around doing nothing. To wait means to focus and to refocus again on what gives us hope and strength, to focus on the everlasting love of God, focus on what God has done in the past. With God, we can rise up. We can run this race of life. And when we get discouraged or grow weary, God will raise us up. We have this image like, swoosh, here comes God, helping us to fly like eagles. But notice that Isaiah is speaking to the people. The you is plural. 
It's the community that is called to remember, or as some say around here, the all y'all. It's everyone. Hear these words and write them on your hearts. Put it in your mind. Make sure your house has these words in front of you. Remember, God gives power to the faint. And so we know that God comes to us just as Jesus came to the mother-in-law of Simon. She was not well. She was weary. And Jesus comes to her, touches her hand, holds her hand, and raises her up, lifts her up. Now, I don't want us to get hung up that she barely had time to catch a healing breath before she was serving people. But this unnamed woman becomes an example that having been touched by Jesus, she is raised up and has energy again. She is no longer faint or weary. And then Jesus leaves and goes to lift other people up, people who were sick, people who were possessed with demons. And I was thinking of the words of that old hymn, I came to Jesus as I was, weary and worn and sad, and found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. What is dragging you down? What is not well in you? What is hurting? Can you hear good news in the scripture today? And can you believe that you and we can rise up? There are mornings when I don't want to rise up for that exercise. But I'm reminded that if I get my body going, there is a community of people that will support me and one another as we do something that's healthy for us. The same is true for our community that we call the church. When we get up, rise up, and come together and worship, we find strength in that community. We find that we're not weary by ourselves. And so that when I need my wings lifted, there are others who lift those same wings with me. That's what it means to be in the community. Maya Angelou offered a poem at the Million Man March in 1995, and she was speaking to this huge crowd of black men on the mall in Washington, D.C., and she reminded them of their difficult and painful history, and then she invited them to focus their lives on joy, gentleness, and care. But in her poem, she says, the ancestors remind us Despite the history of pain, we are an going-on people who will rise again. And the closing line of her poem is, And still we will rise. We have the ancestors, we have the community, we have the church, we have those who have gone before us to lift us up on this journey. And those who have gone before us remind us that we are not alone in this race called life. So still we rise, because those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. These are powerful words, hopeful words. And still, we will rise. Amen.